For one season of basketball, Derrick Rose was the best player in the world, electrifying the league with athletic finishes, passes, and dunks. Then, a series of knee injuries tragically derailed his career, and he was never the same again. A couple of weeks ago, in September 2024, D. Rose retired, having never played at the level he reached in his MVP season. Except, on a cold night in Minnesota in 2018, we saw the old Derrick Rose again for one incredible, redemptive game. This is that story. On the south side of Chicago, there is an outdoor basketball court in Murray Park, occupied by a group of boys who have been playing since sunrise. In fact, they've played there every day this summer. Rain or shine, it doesn't matter. One specific player, Derrick Rose, inches shorter and years younger than all the rest, has won every game today. The Rose family grew up in Englewood, Illinois, historically one of the roughest neighborhoods in the Chicago area. Chicago and Englewood hold their local basketball legends, like Derrick, tightly but the Englewood basketball community is marked by tragedy. Consider the awful story of Ben Benji Wilson, the top basketball player in the country in 1984 and a resident of Englewood, Illinois. In his junior year, he led his local high school, Simeon Academy, to their first ever state title. Then the day before the Simeon season opener for Benji's senior year, he was shot and killed after an argument at school. The Englewood community still holds Benji's memory dearly, and he is memorialized by a gym named after him at Simeon Academy. This is the same gym that Derrick Rose enters as he enrolls in his freshman year of high school. Almost immediately, he was drawing national attention for his game. Those years spent grinding away in Murray Park were paying off. In Derrick's high school varsity debut, the game was completely sold out, with the stands packed with college scouts and coaches. And despite the enormous pressure put on the 16-year-old's shoulders, he lived up to the expectations, putting up 22 points in a 53-49 victory. Over the next three years of his high school career, Derrick Rose developed a game marked by a mix of toughness and athleticism. While he stood at only 6'3", Rose somehow always found a way to drive at the rim and score the basketball. This was toughness developed from years of playing against guys who were much bigger than him and where foul calls were not respected. And so you had to find a way to tough it out towards the rim no matter what. In his junior year, just like Benji decades before him, he led the Simeon Academy to a state title. In overtime of the finals, Rose earned a steal, walked the ball up the court, and buried a floater at the buzzer to win the championship. Then in his senior year, Simeon defended their state title and were named the best high school basketball team in the country, with Rose averaging 25.2 points and 9.1 assists. This kid was special, and everyone knew it. Even as a high schooler, it was clear that Derrick Rose was going to be faster and jump higher than everyone else on the court. Rose decided to go to the University of Memphis for college to be coached by John Calipari, a coach with a great track record of getting his players into the league. During his freshman year, the 2008 Memphis Tigers earned themselves a berth to the NCAA playoffs, where they made it all the way to the finals against Kansas in a playoff run where Derrick Rose dazzled in all parts of the game. He had developed into a complete and unselfish point guard, not just scoring, but assisting and rebounding as well. And as hoped, this star college season was Derrick Rose's only college season, as he declared for the 2008 NBA draft. So in the 2008 NBA draft lottery, the random system that the NBA uses to assign out draft picks, the first pick landed to a team with only a 1.7% chance to get it. This is, of course, remarkably slim odds, but it doesn't even scratch the surface at some of the craziest stories to have come out of the NBA draft lottery. If you'd like to hear about some of them, you can check out the full video covering the lottery on my channel. But in 2008, as fate would have it, the recipients of that unlikely first pick were the Chicago Bulls. In the 2008 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select Derrick Rose from the University of Memphis. After a year away from home at Memphis, Derrick Rose is going back home to Chicago. Chicago, Englewood, and the Rose family were all elated. Their hometown star was going to the league, and he was playing for their beloved Bulls. 
Derrick Rose's rookie season got off to a hot start, scoring more than 10 points in each of the first 10 games. Immediately, it was clear that D. Rose's skills were going to translate to the NBA, as he continued to score seemingly impossible dunks and layups. The highlight of the season came in the playoffs when, in his first ever playoff game, Derrick Rose dropped 36 points on the defending champion Celtics in a huge victory away in Boston. And this performance tied the NBA record for most points in a rookie playoff debut, a record which still stands today. The Celtics did eventually prevail in the seven-game series, but Derrick Rose was just getting started. He won Rookie of the Year honors for his first season with Chicago and then embarked on an electric sophomore season. He started slowly, but really got going in the winter months. In January of 2010, after an emphatic dunk over Goran Dragic, his teammates were so amped up that they gave him a standing ovation in the locker room. Did you not get the memo? Derrick Rose can go upstairs! That same month, he averaged 23.1 points, including a 37-point demolition of the Washington Wizards. This was Rose's first All-Star season, but he knew he had even more in the tank. And so, we begin Derrick Rose's incredible 2010-11 season. The NBA world was abuzz going into this season, but not about Derrick Rose. Headlines were dominated by exciting rookies John Wall and Blake Griffin making their debuts, Dwight Howard destroying people in Orlando, and LeBron's shocking and public decision to move from Cleveland to Miami. But quickly, the basketball world realized they needed to turn their attention to the 6'3 point guard in Chicago. I think I dedicate myself to the game and sacrifice a lot of things. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? In the second game of the season, he put up 39 points. Then he scored 33 in back-to-back -back games. Suddenly, the Bulls were in playoff contention. Then they were leading their conference. And every game, Derrick Rose was shredding opponents' defenses. Every team packed the paint against him, and still he found ways to score, outjumping everyone in his path. D. Rose was no longer a promising rookie or even just an all-star talent. He was a sensation. Minutes ago, Derrick the drive, oh. the scoop, and the score. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. Crosses over nice. Derrick to the rim, lamp. Oh! Up. Bigger, faster, stronger than you, Mr. Teague. Rose blows in. Shot up and oh! Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. The Bulls ended that season as the top seed in the Eastern Conference, beating out the Miami Heat for that top spot. While they only made it as far as the Eastern Conference Finals, losing to that aforementioned super team, all talk around the league was about Derrick Rose. A hometown star just led the Chicago Bulls to their first conference final since Michael Jordan, and he did so in spectacular fashion. This incredible narrative earned Derrick Rose in just his third season in the league to be named the NBA's most valuable player. You led this Bulls team to the best record in the NBA. You are the youngest MVP in NBA history. It is my pleasure to award to you 2010-11 MVP trophy. This right here is for the city of Chicago more than anything. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. My family appreciate it and the organization appreciate it. Thank you all and we love you all. D. Rose's impact on the sport was undeniable. His older brother Reggie recalls that, when I was growing up, everybody wanted to be like Mike. Now when I go to the park, they're practicing the new Derrick Rose moves. Basketball had a new superstar. But unfortunately, Derrick Rose's time at the top of the basketball world would be relatively short-lived. The year after his MVP season, the Bulls were facing the Philadelphia 76ers in the first round of the playoffs. Rose impacted on his left leg in an awkward position and came down holding his knee. Oh, Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee, holding onto his knee and down. He was immediately carted off the court. After the game, the doctors reported the worst. It was his ACL. He had completely torn the ligament, and it would take a minimum of eight months to make a full recovery. Derrick Rose didn't play the next year, opting out in favor of taking the season to recover. Then, in what was meant to be his comeback season, he again came down injured, this time on the right knee. He tore his meniscus. He tried to come back the next season, itching to play again, but that rush only served to re-injure that same knee. After three knee surgeries and missing over 200 games, Derrick Rose, unsurprisingly, didn't look the same. He still loved basketball and gave every minute his all, 
But while there was still flashes of the former brilliance, whether it was a loss of quickness or confidence, he just couldn't perform at the same level he once did. And while Rose spent day after day on crutches, in physical therapy, in training facilities, his team moved past him. Cool to hear about it, but I'm good with being in Chicago. Um, that's the only thing I could think about is just being in Chicago, but I do hear the rumors. In 2016, the Bulls, the only organization Derrick Rose had ever known, the city where he grew up, traded him away to New York. What's up, B? You lying. You serious? Now as a Nick, the basketball world was rooting for Derrick Rose, hoping that maybe this would be the place he could flourish again. Unfortunately, a fourth knee injury in 2017 sidelined him again to surgery. After that surgery, he moved to Cleveland for a brief stint with the Cavs and was then traded away again, this time to Minnesota. Reportedly, around this time, he was considering leaving the league. Constant injury struggles and the associated mental and physical toll that came with them were almost too much to bear. And who could blame him? As a kid growing up in the south side of Chicago, Derrick Rose spent every waking moment he could playing ball in Murray Park, shoveling snow off the court so he could play a few more hours, dreaming of making it to the league. Once in the NBA, he reached the pinnacle of basketball and then had that painfully shoved aside because his legs couldn't handle their own strength. But for the 2018-19 season, Derrick Rose decided to keep playing. And so we enter his first full season as a Timberwolf. His first start of the season came on Halloween night against the Utah Jazz. Rose was starting mostly in part because Jimmy Butler was sitting on the sidelines because of an injury. And so without their newly traded four star player in Butler, Minnesota was coming into this game an underdog. The game opened a little bit shaky with both teams missing field goals. Donovan Mitchell got it started for Utah with a three, and on the other end, Carl Anthony Towns found Derrick Rose for an open look that he drained. At this point, D. Rose began charging at the rim. Rose has never been one to shy away from a mismatch, but Utah's Rudy Gobert stands at a towering seven foot one and is the reigning defensive player of the year. It's no matter for Derrick Rose though, as he records two quick layups around Gobert, earning an and one on the second one to bring his point total to eight. It's the second time Derrick Rose now has taken on Rudy Gobert. Those two leaps looked a little different than what we've been seeing these past seasons. Maybe the old Derrick Rose was back. He notched another three-porter, then found Cat with a defense flooding bounce pass for his layup, and then finished out the first quarter with a perfect cross-court pass for another easy finish. He was rolling. He didn't play much of the second quarter, but that didn't stop him from coming off the bench and scoring this incredibly athletic bucket to put the Wolves up nine. As the half concluded, he walked into the locker room with five assists and 16 points, a solid but not spectacular first half. After the break, the teams returned to court and the tone was immediately set with a jump shot from D-Rose that hit nothing but net. Then he challenged the monster Frenchman again at the rim, scoring around him in the paint for a third time. He continued his heater with another three. Rose playing really well for the Timberwolves. And then a two-pointer in Derek Favors' face. Derek Rose just keeps putting them in. He pulled up for a jump shot to make it 29 points with 17 minutes of game time left, putting everyone on notice that this was his night. He hit a 21-footer in the face of yet another Jazz defender and then drove to the rim at Gobert to make it 33. Just like every team in his MVP season, the Jazz defense were throwing everything they could at Derrick Rose to stop him, and still, he was scoring. This is a lot of wow moments here. Derrick Rose is really turning back the clock. And the crowd applauding the effort out of Derrick Rose here tonight. After a rest on the bench, he came back to the fourth quarter 
on a mission. He was going to muscle through and score that basketball, which he did for two drives in a row that sandwiched two free throws that he made, putting his game total to a whopping 41, one off his NBA career high, a mark that he only reached back when he had two healthy knees in 2011. A few minutes later, and Rose got the ball in the corner, guarded by Dante Exum. He took two dribbles and pulled up. Out of the corner, and it's a new career That's high crazy. for Derrick Rose. That's crazy. Somehow, some way, this was the best game of his career. But the game was far from over, and the teams were tied at 119 points apiece. In vintage fashion, D Rose would get the ball and drive yet again into the paint to notch another layup faking out Gobert with a stop-and-go move. And the Wolves back on top. I'll tell you one thing about D. Rose, though, is he wants it. After the Jazz tied it up at 123s, Rose got inside and nailed a turnaround jumper for 48 points. Tough shot and hits it anyway. 48. He was committed to dragging this underdog Minnesota team across the finish line no matter what. He had two more points in the tank, cleaning up two free throws, for 49 and 50, officially entering the rarefied air of players with a 50-point game. At this point, the teams go to the sidelines for a timeout, and Rose is hunched over. It's finally hitting him what is going on. His Minnesota teammates know how big of a deal it is, and they're surrounding him in support. But the job's not done. The Jazz inbound the ball down three. They know they're going to get the last shot of the game, and they're looking for a three-pointer to tie it. Two shots, one after the other, miss, and the ball falls to a wide open Exum in the corner. As he raises the ball to shoot, an arm rises up to meet him. The six foot three Derrick Rose gets just enough finger on the ball to block it, and in doing so, seals the game for his team. As the buzzer sounds, Derrick Rose's teammates surround him, and the emotion starts spilling out. No one forgot what Derrick Rose was capable of. They just thought they'd never see it again. It's hard to really understand the pain he went through. As Rose was overcome by emotion, fellow NBA players poured in support. Really only other athletes could understand the level of resilience that his journey required. Seven years of rehab, being sidelined, being traded away, and just having to persevere through. All in hope of getting back onto the court just to be frustrated again and again. His coach, Tom Thibodeau, called him one of the most mentally tough people I've ever come across. In a post-game interview, D. Rose was asked what the performance meant to him. He responded, everything. Doing, I'm doing anything just to win, man. I, just, I play my heart out. My teammates told me before the game, just play my game. And tonight was a hell of a, a, hell of a night. What does it mean to you, Derek? Man, everything, man. I work my ass off, bro. I, like... Derek Rose retired in September 2024 after 15 years in the league. But nothing about his post-injury career was as special as this game. Coming from an offseason where he was considering calling his career over and in a game where Minnesota were already the underdogs, Derrick Rose delivered the best game of his career, dropping 50 points and getting the game-winning block. Everything he had gone through, redeemed in this one game. Derrick Rose, son of Chicago and Englewood, NBA MVP, you are great. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you should check out some more of my content here on this channel. I've got plenty of sports stories for you to enjoy. You can also subscribe if you want to tune in for more in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.